days I can. All right. So September uh, 1st. All right. So we're still in chapter two. Okay. We're still working on these story problems today. We're going to take a look at uniform motion problems. Okay. But again, because we're in chapter two, we are only going to be writing these variables in, and we're going to be writing, excuse me, these equations in one variable, because since we're only in chapter two, that's the only ones we know how to solve yet in theory. I mean, I know you guys know more, but we're going to pretend like you don't because we're in chapter two. All right. So basically I'm going to give you three examples today in class. All right. Cause there's only, if I'm talking about uniform motion or I'm talking about two trucks that are driving, all right, there's only so many ways we can drive, right? We can have two vehicles and they can be driving in the same direction, same direction travel, right? Or I could have two vehicles and they could be driving in opposite directions of each other, right? Or they could be doing a round trip. I, I could be talking about maybe just one car and going there and then coming back, so a round trip. All right, those are the ones that we're going to focus on. Okay, technically I could have two and they could be going towards each other, but we're only going to focus on those three. All right, so our first example is going to be a same direction travel. Okay, so unfortunately the only way to do these are is to for you to have the actual story problem. Okay, so I'll copy it down here real quick. Stay with me as fast as you can. A train leaves a train station at 1 p.m. It travels at an average rate of 60 miles per hour. A high speed train leaves the same station an hour later. It travels at an average speed or an average rate, let's say average rate of 96 miles per hour. The second train follows the same route as the first train on a track parallel to the first. In how many hours will the second train, at this point you can tell I'm getting a little bit tired so we're doing first train, second train. The second train, catch up with the first train. Totally sorry, long story problems, we just gotta write them out, okay? Cash, don't have your mask up. Yeah, no. I'm so sorry. It's horrible. I get it. I hate it too. Um, okay. So at this point now, the story problems are going to be paragraphs. Okay. There's going to be lots of information in there. All right. When you have something like this, it's more than an, a good idea to go through and highlight things, underline things, focus on what the story problem is saying, because that's going to help you decipher it. If you try to read this really fast from front to front to you know end beginning to end, all right, it's going to seem like it's way too much information. 
All right, now, just out of curiosity, did we do uniform motion last year? Did we do problems like this last year? Okay, all right. You gotta trust me on this. My method is gonna make this seem simple. Okay, it's going to make it seem simple. All right, now, you're gonna look at the question. All right, it says, in how many hours? Okay, so the answer is going to be five hours, six hours, seven hours. It's going to be some amount of hours. The question is asking for in how many hours. All right, so that is going to be always give you a guide as to how you're going to define your variables. Now, this one is a little bit tricky, more tricky than the other ones. The second example, and third example will be more straightforward. Okay. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to define the variables. Okay, so I'm gonna use a T just because hours would be time, right? As opposed to an X, does it really matter? No, but let's go ahead and use a T and make it a little bit more realistic with our, our problem here. Plus, I do want you to be able to change up that variable and see there's no difference, okay? Now, if the first train leaves at one and then the second train leaves an hour later, what's the difference in the amount of time the trains travel? It differ, they differ by one, right? So one train's gonna be traveling longer, one hour longer than the other one. All right, so if I say that if I let and that word let is extremely important. All right, you got to write the word let, and I'm going to make you do it in pre-calc. I'm going to make you do it in calculus. All right, so might as well learn it now. All right, we're going to let T equal the amount of time the first train travels. Okay, because I had to pick somewhere, so I'm going to let it be the amount of time the first train travels. Okay, now, if T is the amount of time that the first train travels, how much time does the second train travel? Yeah, uh, think again. Because the second one leaves one hour later, T minus one. Okay, so T minus one is the amount of time the second train travels. Okay, now, is that tons and tons and tons of writing? Yes, it is. Is there any shortcut way to get around this? No. All right, you can't just say T equals first train, T minus one equals second train. Because does it really equal the train? It doesn't. It equals the amount of time that the train travels. All right. So that's why you've got to be pretty clear right there. All right. Now, from there, we are going to make a chart. Okay. We are always going to make a chart. You're going to have to fill in a chart. We're going to make a chart. We're going to organize our information. All right. Now, something from science. I don't know. Remember the formula just in general? Where could I put this? Let's put it all the way up here. Let's say distance equals, what's distance equal in science? Oh, it got to be loud enough so I can hear something. Distance equals what times what? Ooh. Have we not heard this formula? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Distance, distance, not distance times time. Speed, except we don't use speed. We do rate times D equals RT. Distance equals rate times time. Okay, so now I'm teaching you this. Distance equals rate times time. Now, stop and think about that, though. Just like a little bit of common sense. All right, your rate is your speed. And y'all have rode in a car before. If you are traveling down the road at 60 miles an hour, 60 miles per hour, and you drive for two hours, how far'd you go? 120. All right, so your speed times time equals distance. Rate times time equals distance. All right, 
Okay, so we're gonna base our chart on that given information, okay? So um, obviously, I'm gonna do it like this. Let's say we've got two trains, right? We got a first train, we got a second train. So we're gonna have our train here. All right. All right, and then we're gonna do the rate. We're gonna make a chart for time. And then we're gonna make a chart for distance traveled. So D, I'm gonna spell that one out, distance traveled. Did you make these charts last year? Yeah, okay. All right, so we've got train number one. And we got train number two. And I made my box a little too big. That happens. Now, I'm going to highlight this part right here. Because the key lies right in those four spots. All right, in the story problem, you're going to be able to come up with the rate for each of the trains. You're going to be able to come up with the time. All right, maybe using variables, maybe using numbers. Don't know, depends on the story problem. All right, but then from there, the way this third, this last column is going to get filled in, this is distance traveled, right? Well, we know distance is rate times time. So if I fill this box in correctly and I fill this box in correctly, I can multiply those two and put the answer right here. Same thing here. If I can fill this one in and fill this one in correctly, then all I got to do is multiply what I put in those two boxes and put it here. So these four boxes are the key. If you can fill those four in, then you should be able to then be able to write an equation and get these right. Okay. All right. Now, Let's start with some variables, all right? T is what? The amount of time for the first train? Time, first train. So this one is T, and we already did that because we defined it over here, okay? Second train. So here's time, here's second train. We've already done it, so this one is T minus one. Okay, now to get the rate. A train leaves train station at one. It travels at a rate of 60 miles per hour. So where does the 60 mile an hour go? In train one or train two? Train one, so I'm gonna put 60. All right, a high speed train leaves the train station an hour later. It travels at an average of 96 miles per hour. So second train, 96. So those four pieces of information are the only things you need. All right, now, rate times time equals distance. So I'm going to take these two things, 60 times T is just going to be 60 T. I'm going to multiply these two things. I'm going to keep in mind that T minus 1 is a binomial. So I'm going to write 96 times T minus 1. I'm going to write down 96 times T minus 1 as the form of a binomial. Okay, so good so far? All right, now, once you have that chart filled out, all right, then the rest of the problem should be relatively easy. We're gonna now write an equation, solve it, and answer the question. Okay, so write the, ooh, let's go back to orange here. Write the equation. All right, now, this is where You kind of got to decide, well, was this a same direction? Or is it traveling in opposite directions? Is it a round trip? That part of the story problem is going to tell you now what to do with these two things. All right, in how many hours will the second train catch up with the first train? Okay, so we're trying to find T, but these two trains are doing what? They're going in the same direction. They're moving forward, so their distance like the one is taken off 
earlier and this one's going much, much faster. So it's going to catch up. So what can you tell me about these two distances? When they catch up, the distances will be equal. It's going to be the same. So there's my equation. 60T equals 96 times the T minus one. All right. So writing your equation, let's do it down here. 60T is equal to 96 T minus one. All right, so there's your equation. And then at that point, I'm hoping everybody can solve, okay? Uh, we'll go ahead and do this one really quick. 60T equals 96T minus 96. Don't let me screw up. If I add 96, no, let's uh, subtract negative, let's subtract the 96T from both sides. So that's gonna give me a what, a negative 36T. Don't let me screw up, negative 96. What's a negative divided by negative? Positive. So then I'm going to have T equal to, at that point, you're going to grab a calculator or something. All right. Um, I do want it in time to make sense here. So it'd be 96 over 36, but I think that reduces to two and two thirds is what I think. Okay. Now that's T. Now I got to answer the question. Let's go back up and look at the question. In how many hours will the second train catch up to the first train? So is my answer two and two thirds? No, because I want the amount of time the second train, train travels. And that's T minus one. All right, so for my answer, I'm gonna have to plug it back in. I'm plugging it back into T minus one. So in other words, I'm doing two and two thirds minus one, which is what, like one and two thirds? So one and two thirds hours. All right, so technically, I don't know, I could even, why am I running out of room here? Let's go back up a little bit. Those people at home there. Um, I don't know, therefore, new mathematical symbol, you guys haven't seen that, right? Three little dots written in a triangle like that means therefore, I can draw a conclusion. I have done all of this work and I can now draw a conclusion. Therefore, the second train We'll catch up to the first train in one and two thirds hours. Okay, so I can draw a conclusion. In math, whenever we prove something or we work something out, which we've worked this out, I've done lots of work, I have justified this answer by defining the variables, creating a chart, writing the equation. So I have justified my answer of one and two thirds. I'm not just randomly throwing one, two thirds out there. Okay. So make more sense. Pretty clear. Okay. All right. Good with that one. Going once, going twice. Okay. All right. No, that doesn't work. Okay. Let's try another one. All right, so again, it's gonna be a really long problem because you can't do anything but long problems on these, okay? So this is my second example. This one is going to be dealing with a round trip. This one is gonna be dealing with a round trip, okay? All right, Nick drives into the city to buy groceries. Trying to shorten this up. Uh, because of traffic, he averages only 15 miles per hour on his drive home he averages 35 miles per hour clearly traffic was not as bad if the total time total travel time is two hours comma 
how long does it take him to drive to the store? When you are doing your homework, you do not have to recopy the story problem down, okay? When you are doing your homework and you ha you guys have not been, you've just been looking at the worksheet off the computer and then answering, that's fine, all right? The only reason we're doing it in the notes because you wouldn't have a story problem to work on if we didn't write it down. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna look at the question, all right? How long does it take him to drive to the store? How long does it take him to drive to the store? That's always where you look. Look at the question they are asking for and then that's where how you're going to define your first variable. Okay, so we're going to define the variables. All right, we're gonna let, let's important. Okay, we're gonna let T equal, what are we going to let T equal? Got to be more specific. What about time? Time that it takes him to travel to the store. Time that it takes him to travel to the store. All right, so length of time, time. All right, time it takes, let's refer to him as Nick even. Time it takes Nick to drive the store. Now I need another time. It's a round trip, right? If it took T amount of hours for him to drive to the store and the round trip took two hours, his return trip took how long? Someone may have said it and I wasn't loud enough. T minus, or what, what'd you say it again? Two minus, two. two minus T, two minus T. The whole trip took two hours. If him going to the store took T, then coming home's gotta be two minus T, okay? So two minus T, time of his return trip. Now we're ready to make a chart. Our chart is always going to look the same. All right, well, however you defined your variables, okay, we defined them what? To the store and then his return home. All right, so that's, you know, you've got to come up with basically what these two scenarios are and then that's going to be that first column. Okay, so um, I don't want, let's go next travel time, next, next travel. Just making this one up because what you had that column is not massively important. All right, then we know we're going to have rate. We're going to have time. And then we're going to have distance. Okay, we've got to the store. And then we've got the return home. All right, so again, the crucial four boxes that you want to fill in and fill in appropriately are these four right here. That's the four that you need to pull information from the story problem and or pull from how you defined your variables. Okay, now this one, I over here I defined this in terms of time. 
So can I come over here and figure out what my time's gonna be? Because I've already done a lot of the thinking here. To the store, time is T. Return trip home, we've already done the thinking there. Return trip home for time is the two minus T. Okay, then we've got to go up out of the story problem and come up with the rate. He drives into the city because of traffic. He only goes 15 miles an hour. So does 15 miles an hour go on the top or the bottom? Top. On his drive home, he averages 35 miles an hour. We've only got one spot. It is his return trip. So 35 goes down here. Once those four boxes are filled in, you should be pretty good. You're gonna multiply straight across because rate times time equals distance. So I'm gonna go 15 times T, which is just 15 T. I'm gonna do the 35 times the binomial of two minus T. All right, now we've got to write the equation, all right, and solve. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna to try to get this all on one piece of paper. I'm going to write the equation. All right, now this is where you go back and you consider, well, what type of tr you know, travel is this? We were talking about round trip, right? He's going to the store and he's coming back. So what can you tell me about these two distances? He lives here, he goes to the store, and then he comes back. Those two distances are, they're the same, they're equal. These two distances are the same, so I can set them equal to each other and form an equation. So I can do 15t is equal to the 35 times 2 minus t. Move it over a little bit there for the people at home. I keep forgetting to do that. All right, then we're going to go ahead. I'm not going to solve this. You guys know how to solve these steps. All right, if I did it correctly, I got t equals about 1.4. Yes, I went to a decimal. No, you don't have to go to a decimal. You could leave it as a fraction. All right. Now we need to draw a conclusion, answer the question. How long does it take him to drive to the store? So do I need to plug this back in? I don't need to plug it back in because if I take T and plug it in here, I'm finding the return trip and that is not what they asked me. They asked for how long does it take him to drive to the store? Well, we define T as time driving to the store. So I've solved for T, so I'm good right there. I can come up with my answer, I can draw a conclusion of therefore it took Nick, I don't know, 1.4 hours to drive to the store. There's no, I mean, like common sense, if you'd write a therefore statement, which we didn't yesterday, we just kind of put them in a box, okay? I mean, the answers can be a little bit different, I do want you to understand what this therefore is, all right? I've done all this work. I have mathematically justified the conclusion that I have just drawn, okay? And then you write a logical sentence that makes sense based on the story problem. Okay, are we good so far? Okay, last type, all right? This one is going to be traveling in the opposite directions. Okay, this one is going to be traveling in the opposite directions. All right, so example, opposite directions. Okay, all right, so here we go. Jane and Peter leave their home traveling in opposite directions and let's be a little more specific other than just traveling in opposite directions let's say in opposite directions on a straight road so clearly they're going opposite, okay? Peter drives 15 miles per hour faster 
than Jane. Well, that does not look like Jane. We're going to pretend like I spelled that correctly. After three hours. They are 225 miles apart. Find both of their rates. Find both of their rates. Overall process always the same. You're going to define the variables. You're going to complete, you're going to draw a chart, you're going to complete the chart, you're going to write the equation, and then you're going to come up with your answer. Okay? So let's work on defining the variables. All right, where do you look? When we define the variables, where are you supposed to be looking? You look at the question. You look at the question, all right? This says find both of their rates. We're finding both of their rates. All right, so when I divine, define their rates, well, I'm gonna have Jane's rate, Peter's rate. Yeah, I've got to define both their rates. All right, so we're going to let, what could we let, since we've been kind of creative with our T this today, what could we let rate be? Where rate could be R, okay? All right, so um, let's see. Jane and Peter leave at home. Peter drives 15 miles an hour faster than Jane. So who's X? And I said X, but I meant R. Who's R? Jane. Okay, so we're going to let R equal Jane's rate. Then if Peter is driving 15 miles an hour faster, then that means R plus 15 has to be Peter's rate. Okay, so I've defined my variables. Okay, then we're going to make a chart. Okay, so again, I've got my, my two people. I've got Jane and Peter here. Okay, so that'll be my first one. So I don't even want to, right, let's just say rates. Person, no, let's not say rates because that's not going to make sense. Let's say it's our person because we, we've got people here. So let's call this our person. I've got a rate. I have a place for time. And then I've got my distance. And we know we've got two people. We've got Jane and we got Peter. Always, these four boxes are the important boxes. Those are the four boxes that you're going to fill in first. Okay, now this time, over here, when I defined my variables, I defined them in terms of my rate. So where am I going to fill in first from over here? Under the rate, all right, and we said Jane's rate is R. So we're just going to be able to put rate, Jane. We're going to be able to put an R right there. Peter's rate, we've already figured out what that is. That's a fit, um, rate R plus 15. Okay, now that means I'm going to have to come up there to the story problem and come up with the time. Okay, so what's time? Three hours because it's the only time given in the story problem. After three hours, they started at home. They're traveling in opposite directions. So after three hours has passed, it's the same three hours for both of them, right? Because time is the same for everyone. So time for Jane is three hours. Time for Peter is three hours. Three hours have elapsed. Okay. Now, again, rate times time equals distance. Rate times time equals distance. So you're going to multiply going across. Three times R is going to give me three R. And then three times R plus 15. If 
you fill in these four boxes correctly and then you can figure out you know exactly what you do with the these two things right here to write your equation you should be pretty good all right now this time what's my equation look like what does my equation look like this time can i set the two things equal no i cannot set the two things equal because they're not, when they leave, they're not traveling at the same speed. Okay, so Peter's going faster. So he's going farther to the right than she is to the left as time passes. So these two distances are not going to be equal. Everybody makes, that makes sense, right? One's traveling faster, they can't be. All right, but at the end of the three hours, what do you know to be true? Say that again. Their combined distances are 225. They started at the same time, three hours have passed. It doesn't matter who went farther, but they are totally apart by 225 miles. So what am I gonna to do to these two things? Add them up. So I'm gonna have a three R plus that three parentheses R plus 15, and they're gonna be 225 miles apart. And then we can solve this, solve, 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 solve. I, I trust you can do this, r equals 30. So question, come back up, find both of their rates. So this time they want you to find both their rates. So is 30 one of my answers? It is, right? So I could, as my answer, I could draw a little conclusion here. I could write it in sentence format, or I could probably say, therefore, Jane's rate is 30, 30 watt. Yeah, miles per hour. And then I could say Peter's rate is, I don't know, let's go back up here, plug it back in, add 15, 45. 45 miles per hour. I've drawn a conclusion. So hopefully this is much easier than the way you tried to do it last year. All right. It organizes the information. All right. This is not the only time we will use a box like this. All right. Because this is just a first introduction to story problems in chapter two. We'll have story problems throughout the rest of the semester. All right, and this idea of forcing yourself to use a box helps you to organize your information. It tells you what needs to be pulled out of the story problem. If you can pull the information out of the story problem correctly, then you should be able to write an equation without any problem. Okay, so you got more pieces and parts this time. Okay, more pieces and parts. Anybody have any questions? Yes. That was a lot. That was a lot to take in. It was, and I only did three example problems. Okay, so actually when algebra one is taught right, by the time we get to second semester, the problems are gonna be long and it will take you a while to do them. Okay, and it's still just algebra one. The problems will get longer in algebra two. They get longer in pre-calc, they get longer in calculus. Okay, so this is why, actually that's a perfect lead into why it is so important for you to be able to organize and write all of your work down. If we're sitting around in calculus and it takes us two and a half pages to work a problem out, there is no way you can do that in your head. You have got to keep track of things. You've got to write it down. You've got to refer back to what you wrote down earlier. Okay, so the most important thing about learning math is being able to be organized and write your work down. All right, assuming that you want to continue, all right, and to graduate, you at least have to go to pre-calc if you want the academic honors development, <laughs> so you at least have to go that far if you want that, okay? All right, so I think we're good. Um, it is like 225 in the room. All right, if nobody's got any questions at home, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and, and knock you guys out. In here, since we're not leaving, we're not going to leave today until like 